In the name of God, the All-Merciful, the Ever-Merciful, and Allah's blessings and peace be upon Muhammad and upon his pure family. Hello and welcome our dear viewers to another episode of the Shi'at Calendar. My congratulations to you on this blessed evening, the birthday of the fifth Shi'at Imam. The holy name of the fifth Shi'at Imam was Muhammad. His epithet was Baqir or Baqir al-Alm, and this name was given to him because he had delved in the oceans of knowledge and had revealed the secrets of different sciences. Other epithets of this Imam are Shakir, one who thanks God a lot, Sabr, one who has a lot of patience, and Hadi, one who guides others, each of which is an indication of one of the attributes of that great Imam. The agnomen of the Imam was Abu Ja'far. His mother was Fatima, daughter of Imam Hassan Mushtaba, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. Therefore, he was a descendant of the Prophet's eldest grandson, Imam Hassan, peace be upon him, on his mother's side, and he was a descendant of Imam Hussein, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, on his father's side. His father was the Lord of the Prostrators before God, Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, alayhi salam. Imam Bakr, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, was born on Friday on Safar the third of the year 55 after Hijra in Medina. He was present in Karbala along with his father and his grandfather, Imam Hussein, and he was a small boy who was almost four years old. The era of Imam Bakr's imamate started from 95 after Hijra, which was the year of Imam Sajjad's martyrdom, and lasted until 114 after Hijra which makes it 19 years and a few months. In the era of Imam Muhammad Bakr, peace be upon him, and his son, Imam Ja'far Sadiq Imamit, events such as the ouster of the Bani Umayyad density, the Abbasids rising up to power, the creation of political conflicts, and the advent of commanders and the adversaries of such as Abu Sulaym al-Khalal and Abu Muslim al-Khurasani occurred. Moreover, books on philosophy and theological controversies were translated in this era, and a number of Sufi elites and ascetics who were followers and fans of the ruling regime, meaning al Abbasi's regime, emerged. In this era, as well, judges and theologians who acted based on the bindings of the government officials and powerful individuals also emerged. These people used to interpret and explain justice, jurisprudence, beliefs, theology, and ethics based on the interests of the powerful ruling class of the caliphate and deviated such as Quranic teachings as imamate and guardianship, which had drawn the attention of many righteous people after the event of Ashura and the Herod incident of Karbala to the rightfulness of the descendants of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and had uncovered the true corrupt face of the Benu Umayyad tyrants and those who had sold their faith to the worldly pleasures and attempted to make the people forget the Prophet's traditions. Some others were also busy forging traditions in favor of the ruling regime or distorting the traditions in favor of the tyrants who had usurped caliphate. These were very disastrous factors against which the guardians and protectors of the religion had to fight. This is why Imam Muhammad al-Baqir and after him Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq seized the political opportunity of those times and started propagating the original and genuine Islamic teachings and religious knowledge and founded the first Shi'at and Islamic Sciences University. This is because these two Imams and after them their apprentices with the heirs and the true guardians of the Prophet's teachings and those of the true essence of justice and law so that they had to make every attempt to educate some pious and knowledgeable apprentices and worthy and devoted companions to compile, edit and teach the jurisprudence of the family of the Prophet. This is why Imam Baqar's salam, class was always full of scholars, scientists, traditionalists, preachers and famous poets. The knowledge of Imam Baqar, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, originated from divine revelations as did that of other Imams, as they had no need, no teacher to teach them such knowledge, and they had not been educated by any man. J. bin Abdullah used to come to Imam Bakr, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, and learn from his vast knowledge, and he constantly said to the Imam, O piercer of sciences, 
I hereby testify that you own a divine knowledge in young age. In Imam Baqar's Allah's blessings and peace be upon him school of thought, knowledge and virtues were taught simultaneously. In Imam Baqar's Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, school of thought, knowledge and virtues were taught simultaneously to the people. Imam Baqar was also in charge of the charities that used to be paid to the messengers of God. Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his pure family and Imam Ali, peace be upon him, his two ancestors and he used to pay these charities to the Beni Hashim and the poor and the needy and he used to manage their financial affairs as well. Imam Bakr salam, enjoyed commandable attributes and he had practiced the Islamic moral values. He was praiseworthy both on the outside and on the inside level. He always wore clean clothes and he walked with utmost dignity and grandeur. The fifth Shiite Imam was very kind and friendly with the believers and his followers as well. He used to shake hands with all of his companions whenever he met them and encouraged everyone to do the same. He used to say in his speeches, shaking hands wipes out all displeasures in the hearts as well as the sins on both sides, just like the way the leaves of the trees fall in autumn. Imam Bakr, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, was very careful to adhere to all of the Islamic practices, such as paying charity, helping the needy, keeping part in the funeral of the believers. Imam Bakr, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, was very careful to adhere to all of the Islamic practices, such as paying charity, helping the needy, taking part in the funeral of the believers, visiting the sick, and observing politenesses and other religious traditions. He intended to revive the tradition of his ancestor, the messenger of God, among the people and to teach moral virtues to the people as well. He used to go out on hot days to check on the farms and palm groves, and he used to work with the workers and farmers on the farms and shovel the ground to make it ready for the crops to be planted. Whatever he earned through hard labor and gradual work, he gave away as charity and in God's cause. When he went to say the morning prayer in the mosque of his ancestor, the messenger of God, Allah's blessings be upon him and upon his pure family, after saying the prayer, the people gathered around him and benefited from the light of his knowledge and virtues. For 20 years, Muawiyah in Sham and his agents in other Islamic regions had worked at their full capacity to display the Islamic truths upside down whether through bribery, threatening, mischief, or employing mercenaries. Therefore, after the tragic incident of Karbala and the unprecedented oppressions and atrocities that the descendants of Abu Sufyan committed, which made the people pay attention to the righteousness of the family of the Prophet, Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, and his son, Imam Muhammad bin Baqir, peace be upon him, made a lot of attempts to correct the people's beliefs especially regarding the issues of imamate and leadership, which must be assumed only by infallible imams, as they are the only worthy persons to assume these important positions. These two imams also made considerable efforts to teaching the true Islamic teachings and knowledge to the people, and these teachings and the promotion of the Islamic jurisprudence and law went up to such a point that the honorable son of the Imam, namely Imam Ja'far al Sadiq, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, founded a university with over 4,000 students and he promoted the Islamic traditions and teachings all around the world in that time. The grounds for this important goal to be realized were set, first by Imam Sajjad through his prayers and litany and his reminding of the many Umayyad atrocities and through promotion of good and prevention of evil and second by Imam Baqar, through holding classes and explaining the clarifying the necessary religious matters for the people. Through his realistic and acute vision of the future and the divine revelations, the Messenger of God, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his pure family, specified the responsibilities of his descendants and family members in the future and their role in promoting the two religious teachings in a series of traditions. A Shaykh al-Saduq has transmitted the following tradition by Imam Rida alayhi salam 
in his book, Uyun Akhbar al-Rida and Al-Amali, the role of Imam Hussein's peace be upon him bring was what is explained in the verse, Inna Allah baligha amri, meaning, for Allah will surely accomplish his purpose. And Ali bin al Hussein, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, used to wear his father's ring. Muhammad bin Ali, peace be upon him, also used to wear the same ring of Imam Hussein's, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. However, it's claimed in the book, Al Fusul al Muhammad, that the role of the Imam's ring had been in this verse, Rabbi la tadarni farda, meaning, My Lord, do not leave me alone. The author of this book, Al Fusul al Muhammad, has also added the following to his discussion. Imam Bakr, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, lived in the era of the Caliphate of Walid bin Abdul Malik, Sulaiman bin Abdul Malik, Omar bin Abdul Aziz, Yazid bin Abdul Malik, and Husham bin Abdul Malik. Some have also added the names Walid bin Yazid bin Abdul Malik, Yazid bin Walid bin Abdul Malik, and Ibrahim bin Walid bin Abdul Malik to the above mentioned names. Sheikh Mufid has written the following in his book, Al Irshad, that Imam Bakr had seven children Abu Abdullah Jafar bin Muhammad, his eldest son, and this is why Imam Bakr was also called Abu Jafar. His other son was Abdullah, and the mother of these two sons was Umm Farwa, the daughter of Gashem bin Muhammad bin Abu Bakr. Two other sons of the Imam were called Ibrahim and Ubaidullah, whose mother was Umm Hakim, daughter of Asad bin Muqabia. No lineage today exists from these two sons. Other children of the Imam were Ali and Zainab, whose mother was a slave woman. Umm Salama was also another daughter of the Imam, whose mother was also another slave woman. Some have said that Umm Salama and Zainab have been the same person and this claim has also been made in the book Alam al Wara. Bin al also maintained that Imam Bakr had had seven children and he has also enumerated them like Sheikh Mufid, with the difference that he had also enumerated an Abu Abdullah al Fattah as one of them, of one of Imam Bakr's sons. And he had said that except for Imam Sadiq, who had a lineage, other children of Imam Bakr passed away without leaving a lineage. Imam Bakr's shining scientific, social, political, and moral personality was so dazzling that no one could have ever denied or overlooked the perfection and the comprehensiveness of his personality, and all of the scholars and elites that had met him had found admitting that Imam's numerous virtues causing their own perfection they added, by doing so, they added to their credit and worth in the eyes of other scholars and thinkers. The scientific figures of various Islamic sects have described Imam Muhammad Bakr's characteristics and their words have been recorded in the pages of history forever. In that, in the time of Imam Muhammad Bakr, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, some Jewish scholars used to pretend to be Muslims and this is why they found the opportunity to spread some fake traditions in the name of the Prophet, which were called Israeliyat. The effect of these traditions on the jurisprudence and theological issues was extremely dangerous. Therefore, the Imam stopped the spread of their undesirable culture by condemning these traditions and refuting them. Later on, other infallible Imams also made every effort to cut off this undesirable cultural connection between the Muslims and the Jews, which intended to lead the genuine and rich Islamic culture. What makes obeying an Imam obligatory is the sound mind, and the miracles also verify the choice made by the sound mind. This is why all of the infallible Imams had some miracles which are beyond the power of ordinary human beings. For instance, one of the companions of Imam Bakr said, I used to teach the Quran to a woman in Kufa, and once I joked with her a little. So when I went to meet the Imam, he reproached me upon that and said, Anyone who commits sins in secret, God the Almighty will never pay attention to him. What did you say to that woman? The Imam asked. I covered my face as I was ashamed of myself 
and pretended. Then the Imam said, never go back to doing that obscene deed again. The entire life of the great Imam Abu Ja'far Muhammad in al-Baqir, peace be upon him, is full of wisdom, examples and advice. What follows is a small part of the Imam's words. No mixture is ever better than the mixture of patience with knowledge. The best worship is being chased in one's sexual life and one's earnings. Prudency and faith are tied together with a string, so when one loses one, he will lose the other as well. I advise you to observe piety, truthfulness, and to have individual reasoning, and also to pay back the deposits to their honors, no matter whether the honor is a good person or a bad one. And if Imam Ali's murder, Imam says, gives me something to keep safe for him, I will return it to him, definitely. God bless Imam Muhammad al-Baqir. Allah's blessings, peace be upon him. This is for this episode of the Shia calendar. Until we meet with another episode, thank you very much indeed. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.